I'll call this uh, Municipal Planning Commission meeting to order. The Municipal Planning Commission is conducting this meeting in person and via conference call in accordance with the Municipal Government Act, Section 199. Council Chambers is now open for public attendance in person. However, members may still join meetings remotely using our current teleconference process. As per Wheatland County Policy 7.13, members of the public are not permitted to speak unless the Commission agrees to hear from them. If the Commission agrees to follow to allow the public to speak, the Chair will call upon the specific individuals at that time. Please note this call is being recorded and will be uploaded to our website and or social media. For any individuals using the conference call line, we ask that you mute your phones to eliminate background noise. Everyone has a right to be present at Municipal Planning Commission meetings. Any attendees that are considered disruptive to the progression of this meeting may be removed at the discretion of the Chair as per the Municipal Government Act, Section 198. We thank you for your cooperation and understanding. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. <laughs> um, we have um, an agenda in front of us. Are there any additions or deletions? I'll move the agenda as presented. Thank you, Commissioner LaPrice. All in favor? That's passed. Uh, we have a copy of the unapproved minutes of January 11th, 2023. I move approval of the minutes as presented. Thank you, Commissioner Link. Um, all in favor? That is passed. Uh, we are now going to uh, on to development permit applications. And we'll start at uh, DP 2022-165. Morning, everyone. I'm Suzanne Hayes, Development Officer with Wheatland County, and I will be presenting three development permit applications this morning. The first application before us is DP 2022-165 to add eight visitor camping sites to the existing campground major and to relocate the dog run. So the location plan is on page 15 of the agenda package. Oops. Which I will go to right there. So this is within the Oasis Grove Campground north of Highway 901 on Range Road 254. We did circulate to the WID. They had no concerns. We did an internal circulation and the manager of operations Noted that the transportation department is in agreement with the proposed traffic flow restrictions, which you will hear about shortly, permitting resort traffic to only enter and exit from the south, and they would provide a recommended signage plan. If resort traffic is restricted to access from the south only, dust control condition could be altered so that the applicant would be responsible to dust control the entirety of Range Road 254 from Highway 901 to the resort entrance, which is approximately 1,200 meters. The applicant would have the option to extend the dust control past the entrance across the resort frontage as desired, which then would be approximately 600 meters. Currently, the applicant provides dust control annually on Range Road 254 and Township Road 230 in front of residence, residences and resort frontage only totaling 1,600 meters. We circulated to surrounding landowners within one mile. As you can see on the circulation map on page 15, we received two responses from landowners to the north and their full responses can be found on page 21, but I'll just summarize. The concerns were related to increased traffic, dust, trash, the timing of the traffic count that had been conducted, Doing on-site improvements without permits, road upgrades were incomplete, and questions regarding paving. In response, staff advised the, uh, the um, concerned landowner that the proposed condition restricting traffic flow entering and exiting the site should alleviate a lot of their concerns, and that a traffic count had been conducted in August of last year during the camping season and that the majority of traffic was entering and leaving from the south. We also clarified that it was a previous campground owner who had begun the expansion of the sites without a permit 
and the current owners had been very conscientious about getting their required permits. We advised that the only required road upgrade was to the intersection of Highway 901 and Range Road 254 and that it had been completed as required by the new owners and also provided a copy of the condition regarding dust control and that and the landowner was further advised that the new traffic pattern no dust control was being recommended north of the campground if the traffic pattern was approved. So on pages 16 and 17, we have their site plan and some aerial photos. The application is to allow eight 40 by 20 dedicated on service sites to be used by visiting friends and family. They would be reserved by leaseholders of an existing lot within the campground and not available to the general public. They would not have hookups for power, water or sewer and no open fires would be allowed, only propane fires. A fence would be installed along the parcel boundary adjacent to Range Road 254 for safety and screening. The campground is also proposing to relocate the dog run, which was granted a permit in 2020 to a location further south than its original location. As found on page 16, you can see where the dog run was and where they're proposing it to go. So as previously mentioned, due to concerns with speeding and dust from uh, locals in the area, traffic counts were conducted for a one week period in August of 2022. And the conclusion was that the majority of resort traffic is already accessing the campground by traveling north on Range Road 254 from Highway 901. And the data also allowed staff to conclude that 85% of the traffic is traveling either at or below the speed limit. On page 18, we can see a proposed signage plan. This option was the result of a meeting held last fall in October when representatives from the resort met with the County Transportation Department and Planning and Development staff to talk about options for addressing the concerns which had been raised. And we discussed the installation of signage restricting traffic flow entering and exiting the resort as a potentially workable solution. New signage could be installed requiring all resort traffic to enter the resort from the south and requiring to them to leave the resort by a left turn only traveling towards Highway 901 to the south. Signage was discussed at that time to prohibit, prohibit the left turns into the campground from Township Road and from traffic traveling southbound from Township Road 230. So the proposed solutions would restrict campground traffic from utilizing the roads to the north entirely. So that should address the concern from the northern landowners regarding dust and traffic. And the resort representatives felt that because they were also the campground owners, the occupants would be motivated to adhere to the traffic flow restrictions as it would help them avoid additional dust control costs. So pages 19 and 20, we have the proposed uh, dust control and the historic dust control that had been completed. The resort applies dust control directly in front of residences, both north and south, south of the campground currently for about 1600 meters, as I mentioned, and the new traffic flow would remove the dust control requirements from north of the facility or the campground and would recommend an application just annually to the entire distance from the most northern campground entrance to the 901 intersection for a total of approximately 1600 meters. So some things to consider. The proposed traffic flow requirements will alleviate concerns from landowners to the north. Additional dust control will be provided to the landowners to the south. And the addition of the eight visitor sites fits within the overall parameters of a campground major. So the conclusion and staff's recommendation on page eight of the agenda package um, is that staff are recommending that MPC approve this development permit for an amendment to the campground major subject to the conditions as noted, which include the dust abatement measures previously described, the signage plan restricting the traffic flow, and also that it is the responsibility of the applicant to enforce the traffic restrictions. 
Page 13, we have the standard three options for MPC to consider. And that concludes my presentation. Please let me know if you have questions. Thank you very much. MPC's wishes. I have a few questions. Um, <clears throat> in here for the conditions, it says um, dust control to be completed by June 1st. Uh, because this is a campground, I feel that's uh, late. Uh, when is dust control um, able to start? I would like to defer that question to Cody, manager of operations. Thanks. Uh, through the chair, uh, dust control uh, for county applications typically begins the weekend, the week following May long weekend. That's usually when we begin purchased applications. Uh, the, the reason we go with a June 1st timeline on development permits is so that they have that ability to get that applied within that first month so that, uh, you know, if, if they don't get it done within that time, we still have time to, to apply it within our timelines if they so chose. Uh, since you're still there, um, another question would be, so the dust control that you're going to put down, there was a new dust control that was applied just uh, uh, west of here, is that going to be more what it's going to look like, or is it the same old? Uh, so been using? Currently, the the way it's written is that it will be a calcium chloride or equivalent. Um, we're looking to do a, a pilot program uh, with a, a new product that uh, we're looking at out of Montana that they've had really good success with, and we trialed it a little bit um, uh, last year in a couple spots and it seems to be holding up well so we're looking to do kind of a, a bigger pilot on it um, so if this passes as it is then we're, we're hoping to talk with Oasis and, and set that pilot program up and and hopefully apply that sooner okay yeah because I feel that uh, of course the long weekend is the busiest weekend for the the camping mm -hmm. if um, if that could be um, done earlier I think that that would help residents um, the other one was, I didn't. They didn't mention any signage on eight seventeen and two thirty. I think there needs to be a sign there too. Coming off eight seventeen, coming south, saying that there will be no uh, access to um, Oasis through that road. Uh, yeah, that is something that we we could definitely uh, look at if if. Uh I think it's just by habit they're they're going to be turning in there and then they can't turn left. They're going to go all the way down, have to turn around, and come back in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a sign of that nature would be fairly easy, I think, to to put up. Of course, it wouldn't be regulatory or anything. It would just be informational. Yeah, informational would be good. So if that could be added, um, another one was um, we have two entries into on the map. It showed two entries. Is, are they going to close one entry of? I can see two. So is there going to be, I guess, is there going to be signage at both entries? Uh, from what I recall, uh, one is a dedicated entrance and one is a dedicated exit uh, for campground users. So they, they only, I believe they only enter from the, the northern entrance and they exit from the southern one. Okay. Okay. And that's, I haven't been there for a while. Um, yeah, that was all my questions. I've just got a question on, on, on dust control here. So the page 17, or sorry, it's okay. page 19, they, pro they uh, proposed to do that 1.2 kilometers from um, 90, 902, 901, 901 in. How do you stop people? So I'm just, I'm a human being. I live in that, I'm staying in that campground. I'm going to go to Strathmore to get more stuff. How do you stop the people from turning and making that illegal turn and going out past Lawson's feedlot, then down 817? Like, how is that going to, and then if I'm coming back, I'm going to do the exact same thing in my car which may affects all those people that live on on 230 there and then in front of the feedlot or in front of the oasis on the on the uh, north of the uh, where they stop the so how do, 
because I don't want to be having to have a bylaw officer, a peace officer out there all the time because so I'm thinking that if you go to page 20, if you um, continue your dust control all the way to the corner and then there, then I think that eliminates any any problems at all. I know it's it's more distance, but there are, I believe, four families in there that are, are and I mean, it, this is all fine and dandy, you know, pulling in from, from uh, 901 with your trailer, I, but I'm thinking most of these are permanent sites, so these people are going to be sneaking in and out, and they're going to go the, east, the least, the most carbon effective way to go, which means the one you will burn the least amount of gas on. So I'm just, I'm just looking for input from commission on that. Uh, through the chair, uh, so uh, it, the previous dust control conditions were felt by residents in the area to be inadequate as we heard through many complaints over, over the last couple of seasons. Um, so the thought was is to try and, and divert most of the traffic to the south as was originally intended um, when they were required to develop the, the highway intersection and whatnot down there. Um, they have spent a significant amount of funds uh, developing that intersection. And uh, so we, we thought it would be most beneficial just to try and direct the traffic that way, keep it all going that way. Uh, the signs are regulatory, so they can be enforced through through bylaw. If we so chose, they could go out there and, and provide tickets and stuff. But uh, as uh, stated prior, the residents are owners and, you know, we were hope that they would encourage their uh, their users to go that way to help keep their costs down and whatnot. Um, you're right, people are people, and and there will be the odd bunch that go that way. But uh, hopefully, you know that'll be in the the minority of users. Um, I think extending the the dust control condition further north and around, though it is an option, it would be quite onerous. Um, like currently, the cost is about sixteen thousand a year, I believe, is what they're paying to to do this dust control annually. Um, so to extend that condition even more, I mean, we're we're talking about significant amount of dollars on an annual basis, and I mean, we just felt that this would just kind of keep in line with what they're currently uh, spending on dust control without adding you know, undue cost onto them. Any other? Yes. Um, I was wondering if uh, in the conditions, if this is allowed that another um, actual road uh, vehicle count be done the same time we did last year on the uh, north on 230 uh, to test to see whether this is is kind of working, that it would be just de be done on an annual basis if that could be put in a condition. Um, I'm, I'm sure that could be added as a condition. Um, we would intend to do traffic counts regardless uh, and a little more intensive than what we did the first round. That was more about uh, determining overall traffic. Um, we would, could do counts on either side of the resort and uh, and trying to determine how much traffic is actually turning in and going yeah. past. So it's just a little more uh, uh, intensive counting we would need to do. We just hadn't done it at that time. Um, yeah. But uh, it's definitely something that could be added for sure. That way, you could monitor bylaw uh, infractions too from the owners. I'm not sure if we can condition ourselves. So the additional traffic count would just be oh. maybe something that you yeah, might want. That could be done. Yeah. yeah. And then the other thing was there is a condition on here that we would not be enforcing the the traffic flow. So if you wanted to speak to that condition, and Chris, uh, the peace officer is here to speak to it if you like, but it was our intention that the campground patrons would be providing their own enforcement. Sherry, did you have something to add? Yes, through the chair to the commission. Um, we won't be able to add that kind of um, enforcement as a condition because these conditions are for the applicant and they can't then have our peace officers go out. It would be something that the uh, county would have to just add to to our list of things that they go out and police that area and do um, some spot checks for radar, but it wouldn't be something that we can add as a condition. We can note that 
for staff and um, the, the same with the. Um, so it would be added to the bylaw through council. Is it added to a bylaw? No, for policing? Yeah. No, it wouldn't be. I think it would be in, um, a peace officer. It would just be something we would add to their um, his his um, routine that okay. they set up for their peace officers. And Chris can speak to that. Uh, good, good morning uh, through the chair. Uh, enforcement would be conducted if it's a regulatory sign coming out of the resort that does state that it is a left turn only. Um, if people are turning to the right and going north with that white on, uh, sorry, the black lettering on white sign regulatory, it is enforceable. It's actually $243 ticket for failing to obey a traffic control device. Perfect. Outside of that, it is um, going to be extremely difficult to enforce um, who's coming in and out of the campground and such. It's 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 a public roadway. Everybody uses it without stopping absolutely everybody to find out where they're going. It would be virtually impossible to determine that. Thanks, Chris. <clears throat> I've got one more question on uh, regards to uh, dust abatement. On these um, conditions, can the dust abatement issue be readdressed a year from now? Like if I'm getting five or six phone calls that this is not working, can we address, like I, I've got no problem with the majority of what's going on. The problem here is going to be the dust abatement. So can we address the dust abate? Can we make a condition that the dust abatement is addressed yearly? Or if there's any complaints that it's addressed because that we may have to, we may have to, Put dust basement all the way to the end and across the corner through the chair to the commission i would suggest if you want to add that because it's just stated yearly so that it doesn't take care because then after that it's on a complaint basis and then working through um with the applicant to do the additional application so it would be whether or not we want to have it done twice in during the season rather than once a year but it would be also the last sentence go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, through the chair. Um, we just noticed the last sentence of condition 10. Additional applications of dust control may be required should dust not effectively, uh, not be effectively mitigated to the satisfaction of the county. So that does provide some of that flexibility you're looking for. But that is only on that 1.2 kilometer. I'm thinking there may be a problem on the piece just right in straight west of the campsite. And then if you continue going straight north from the campsite, and then you turn east and go down 230. Those situations may have to be addressed if we cannot, like if the enforcement, if the people are continuing using that that direction to come in on. Do you, um, people understand that? Like, I, so I'm just looking for com, uh, the commission's I, thoughts on it. Yes, Commissioner. So looking to administration, would it be possible to just say um, take the word applications of out and say additional dust control may be required should dust not be effectively mitigated to the satisfaction because I see what you're saying like application does imply that it would be that same dust control but if you took applications of out and just left it very general additional dust control may be required do, do you think hmm. yes commissioner Clausen being that it is a new traffic pattern stuff, to, I think everybody just wants to see that it's going to be what it what it is being proposed. I think a, another addition would be to review traffic counts and dust control measures, like a complete separate line, if we can do that, because it could it could be satisfactory in a year. Maybe everybody's perfect and we have no problems. Yeah. You know, but I think it's prudent that we have uh, we review it. I don't know if we have that power in this. I, I, in my opinion, it would be then that this would be a temporary approval and we'd be revisiting it in a year, but we're basing it all on the, on the dust. I don't know if these eight visitor sites are the cause of the dust, so. So I feel that, uh, I feel that the, the development has come a long way. Um, I want to support the development, but I do get a lot of complaints about the way it's been done now. So I do feel that this is um, this is a way to help. Um, but we have some checks 
that we can do. We can do the um, traffic counts and we can also um, do ticketing at least. Um, I mean, these are owners and they are hopefully responsible for what their neighbors feel about their development. So um, I'm okay with uh, the solution. Just to add uh, that if we could add the sign on 817. Um, if there's only one entry, that's fine. The dust control done as soon as possible. And um, I know you, you could leave June 1st in there if that's, that's like the last date. Um, and that the fact that we have uh, ability to ticket is good. I feel comfortable with it. Oh, sorry. Cody was just sharing that any sign on the Highway 817 would be an Alberta transportation sign, but we could do it on 230. Oh yeah, there's a post office there. They could turn around there. There is a uh, post office turnabout. They could turn around. My my thing is turning around. Uh, through the chair, yeah, we, we could uh, definitely make the application to Alberta Transportation, but ultimately it would be up to them. So I, I would hate to just put it as a condition on here, being that it would be subject to their approval, but. Okay. But we could also put it on 230. Yeah, okay. Yes, Commissioner Clausen. Sorry, uh, were, were you looking for like a no access to sign? Because I've seen those on highways before. No access to Oasis. Yeah, something like that would be appropriate, I think. And that would be on 230? Yeah. Okay. It'd be preferred off 817. We could maybe just keep that out of the conditions, but put it an application into to transportation. Okay. Yes. And through the chair to the commission, were you looking that we modify condition number 10 so that it's not when there's additional um, complaints that we may request um, dust control outside of areas then not just specified in figure two? It's just figure two only includes from the campground south. But if we expand the language just a little bit to other areas, which so that we could capture the very northern part, should the complaints come in? After? I do feel that would be um, okay. Would we be can modify time. condition number ten. That's fulsome discussion. Now, MPC's wishes. I'd like to see the if we can get the adjustments. Are the amendments put onto the each one? Is there a possibility of doing that? So we got it. We could do that if we can just take a brief. Break. Yeah, I think it's better that way that okay. we see the wording and everything, and then the yeah, applicant can see it as well. What five minutes? We'll take a five minute break for for uh, staff to get wording right on the. Have we got all the wording for the amendments? Yeah. Yes, we do. So Thank we've you. added to condition 10, um, this clause, we changed the final sentence there, um, where it used to say additional applications of desk control may be required. We've changed it to, should desk control not be effectively mitigated to the satisfaction of Wheatland County, additional applications of desk control may be required, including in areas not identified in figure two. And then we have changed on the signage condition. We've added a bullet that says, um, under left turns into the campground for southbound traffic, traveling from town to road 230 towards 901 will not be allowed. And then we're going to add a signage on town to road 230 that says no access to Oasis Resort signage to be installed on town to road 230 west of Highway 817. Does that capture what you were? Okay. Thank you, Steph. So once again, I will ask MPC's wishes. Yes. Does that uh, last one, it says west of 817. We're, we're negating that we could have one possibly on 817. With that, right? We have to apply the, tr the transport. Or is it up to us to apply or up to the applicant to apply? I don't know. The Cody, I believe, is going to be the one to take that. 
Uh, through the chair, uh, pending approval of this, uh, I'd be happy to make the application on their behalf. It's a pretty simple process. And would the cost be borne by us to put that sign up, or would it be the uh, the? It's probably two hundred dollars to to put it up. So I mean, we we could bear the cost, or we could uh, put a note in there just said that pending approval by transportation, they would bear such cost of the installation of that sign. Something to that effect. I would think so. You should probably do that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So we're going to add that. Thank you. Okay, like right there. So say that again, Cody. Pending approval from Alberta Transportation. Access to just copy the the okay, point. So no here. access to oh. Signage. Oh, okay. On Highway 17. Mm -hmm. so north of Township 230. North of Township 230 at the expense of the. Are we saying that? Yeah. At, oh, 817. Mm -hmm. At the expense of the applicant. Okay, so that condition has been amended saying pending approval from Alberta Transportation, no access to Oasis Resort. Signage to be installed on Highway 817 north of Town to Road 230 at the expense of the applicant. And just just a quick question. All the other signage, like the no left turns and all that that's that's borne by the applicant right now or will be yes okay, does it you. say that up there oh okay and forming the permit directing tax yeah and it, it doesn't specify that in there so maybe we should can we just specify all signage required be borne by the applicant sure i'll put that the bottom out of here somewhere. All costs. Signage installation. Okay. I think condition 12 actually does specify all associated costs to be invoiced to the applicant. Oh, sorry. Oh, it does. It does. Yeah, I, sorry, I missed that. Yeah, I, so I forgot. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll take that one out. So with that, um, I'd like to make a motion that Munis Municipal Planning Commission approve DP 2022-165 for an amendment to the, to the campground major subject to the following conditions. From one to twelve. Thank you, Commissioner Bigger. One to thirteen. One to thirteen. Thank you, Commissioner Bigger. Any more discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor? That is passed. Uh, we'll move on to DP 2023-005. This application is for a variance request to the setback between buildings. The location plan is on page 27. It is located approximately five miles north of Highway 1 and two miles west of Highway 56. On the same page, we have the circulation map. We circulated to landowners within one mile. We did not receive any responses. We did not perform an agency circulation. Um, internal circulation had uh, a comment from agriculture and environment stating ensure weeds are managed after construction and from fire services stating no due to the new structure being constructed of non combustible concrete fire has no concerns with the variance. On pages 28 and 29 we have some aerial photos showing the proposed plans. 
So a new farm building to replace the existing structure will be demolished and removed from the site and the new building will be used for farm storage. So that would be the building up here on the upper building. That one is going to be removed and replaced with a larger building shown in yellow on the above photograph. So, um, and also an existing private greenhouse is in the, in the way of the new building. So it will need to be relocated to accommodate the new building. But in order for the relocated greenhouse to meet the setback from the power head line, the overhead power line, the applicants are requesting to place it in a location abutting the farm building. So it will be constructed, the farm building, from concrete, and there will be two man doors located on the end where the greenhouse is proposed to be located. One of the man doors exiting the farm building will lead directly into the greenhouse. So the application has been made to request a variance to the five-foot setback between buildings. On pages 29 to 32, there are some photos of the greenhouse existing as it exists right now, and then the illustrations of where the of the new farm building. So some things to consider. The proposal meets the criteria listed in section 4.3 4.3 regarding variances as it should not have a negative impact on surrounding landowners. And due to the farm be building being constructed of concrete, there were no concerns raised by fire services and no concerns were raised from circulation to surrounding landowners. So staff's recommendation is found on page 22 and it is to approve 22 and 23 that Municipal Planning Commission approved this application for a variance to the setback between buildings subject to the conditions as noted, which includes in condition two that the variance is granted with the stipulation that the farm building be constructed of non-combustible concrete material. The standard three options are found on page 25 for MPC to consider. Please let me know if you have questions. Thank you, Suzanne. MPC's wishes? I'll move that Municipal Planning Commission approve DP 2023-005 for a variance to the setback between buildings subject to the conditions one through five. Thank you, Commissioner Laprise. Discussion? There's no discussion. I'll call the vote. All in favor? That is passed. We'll move to DP 2023-006. This application is for a home-based business type three, a sanctuary for the care of rescued, surrendered, injured, and abandoned farm animals. Location plan is found on page 32, 42 of the agenda package. It is located 4.5 miles north of Highway 564 and 1.5 miles east of Rocky View County border. So we did circulate to Alberta Health Services. There was no response at the time of this report. Internal circulation, the peace officers uh, mentioned that there have been many complaints from neighbors regarding this property about parking, road access, and other various items. If approved, there could be an increase in calls for service to protective services. The manager of operations has uh, noted that there are 15 tours with eight cars per tour, totaling 120 vehicles or 240 trips in and out of the property. That would be annually. Limited to Saturdays and every other Thursday over the summer months, I recommend a dust control condition be applied to protect the neighbor from increased dust resulting from the traffic, approximately 200 meters from the driveway south. Agriculture and environment had concerns about overgrazing and weed management. So um, these have been addressed within the body of the report, which I will summarize. Page uh, 42, we have this circulation map. We circulated to landowners within one mile. The full responses are found on page 41, 49 to 51 of the agenda package. And we did, um, address responses to their concerns within the body of the report as well. The applicant also supplied 24 letters of support from individuals, volunteers, and entertainer, business owners from Strathmore and Calgary, produce donators, a journalist, an animal rights board member, a rescue society, and a veterinarian. 
On pages 43 and 44, we have the site plan. So the housing and care of farm animals would typically be considered to be an ag operation, except for the fact that they hold select fundraising activities on the site. So they have applied for home-based business type three. The sanctuary partners with farmers and organizations such as enforcement agencies and humane societies to offer lifelong care to surrendered farm animals. They do the fundraising to purchase feed, bedding and other necessities. And they hold fundraising activities which are larger in nature off site and smaller activities on the site if approved. So um, supporters of the facility have offered to host the larger events off site. So the events have been occurring on site up till now, but this um, approval or refusal will determine if they continue. So events and activities proposed to remain on site include the 12 to 15 tours from July to September, a Mother's Day event for 25 people and a pumpkin drop um, one week after Halloween. So page 45 of the agenda package, we have a proposed dust control plan. The applicants have been decreasing traffic and will continue to do so by hosting the larger events off site. The main parking area can hold eight to 10 vehicles with additional pay space in front of the machine shop for five more vehicles and overflow parking is now available by the pasture. There's no signage posted lessening the potential for animals to be abandoned at the facility gate. The facility operators are open to discuss the possibility in investing in signage if neighbors think it would benefit the community. So pages 45 to 48 are some photos of some of the activities uh, and on site. Some considerations, a charitable organization is not a typical type of HPB as it's not a business enterprise. However, it is a use that promotes tourism opportunities and support to the agricultural industry, which is in line with MDB policies. A condition has been added that an increase in intensity may require rezoning or relocation if the business exceeds the HPB three parameters. A requirement for dust control has been added as a condition to mitigate impacts to the nearest landowner and the permit is issued for a two year term at which time it can be reevaluated prior to renewal. On pages 35 and 36, we have the proposed conditions. And we have added um, a dust control condition with again, a figure showing the proposed dust control. And we have also that it is issued for a two year term expiring February 14th, 2025. MPC has the standard three options found on page 40. Please let me know if you have questions. Thank you, Suzanne. MPC's wishes. Discussion. Go ahead, Commissioner Clausen. Thank you. I just want to note that this um, commission look at page 44 and look at the, how close the residences are. This is 99% um, of the problem. Um, this facility was running and, and uh, it would have been easier to catch this before it, it actually came to be, but it has been overused than what they're even proposing now. So it's scaled back to meet this need, um, but it was operating over and above that and we found out about it through whatever. Um, I don't really feel that a lot of this stuff's going to mitigate the problem. It's two polar opposites of, of land use. Um, agriculture in this county is who we are. And this is a part of animal welfare that sometimes butts heads with agriculture. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying like that. I'm just saying it's, it's polar opposites. So it's, it's hard to mitigate those concerns. And I want to see success. I want to see neighbors being able to, to live with each other. And uh, like I said, it would have been easier to catch this before it ever came to be. So, And I do believe one of the neighbors would like to speak. It's up to the commission if they want to want to hear from them. I can make a motion. 
I would suggest you make a motion. And then. Um, I'll make a motion to ask MPC that uh, the affected neighbor be able to speak to this commission. All in favor? Opposed? It is passed, so we will hear from the from this person. So just clarifying, if we vote allow one person to speak, do we allow, or is it going to be a vote on, if there's somebody that's a... I think you have to hear both sides, that's just me. So and that's sort of what, I just want to get the feel of what, that's what we agreed to. Oh wait, perfect. May I ask, is the applicant here? No. Yeah. She okay. had asked me if there would be this opportunity for people to speak, but I had quoted to this landowner um, the policy that was on our website that says no one is allowed to speak. So I had told her that. So she isn't here because I told her this wouldn't be happening according to the policy. But in our opening spiel at the meeting, yes, you, it says people are allowed to so, speak. So. Oh, so there's been a, a miss. I'm this is I'm addressing this to to administration. There's been a a miscommunication, I guess, and whether I don't know. So how do we proceed with this now at this point? If if the if the applicant was told that there was no chance of being heard, and now um, according to what I have read read into the minutes, there if if commission wants to hear the person speak. They're allowed to, if the commission agrees to it, they're allowed to. So is there, have we created like it, so? Through the chair to the commission, it, we do advise and we will correct the way we notify applicants that it is up to the commission to vote whether applicants can speak or not. It is not a public hearing. And since they're here, I would just say the, the negative to this would be that it could be one more thing. Should this application be refused, the applicant can appeal it. it. Might be something they add that they couldn't have an opportunity to speak, but this isn't a public hearing. And um, so the process is different. It's up to the commission of information they require to make a decision on the application. Yes, Commissioner Clausen. In the interest of fairness, then I would suggest that we uh, put this to another meeting. And following that, sort of along that same grounds, because I've got on a DP, I cannot, like there are some of the, in the background information, uh, one, because animals go to this place to die. Like it's different than any other farming operation out there. Animals die on in, in in a normal farming operation but they don't but that's sort of um it's not what you plan on happening so so they're planning on burying animals on this is is and i i when you're bringing hundreds of animals in and they're all going to be i i you know like but it's not our play i don't know how you change that because that is not the proper way to dispose of something when you're bringing in everything in else um, so I don't know how we, we, we address that situation. I know it can't be addressed here. Um, but it's, it's just, I think this has to be brought back to it. Dis Cause this is not, I do not see how this is agriculture. This is not supporting agriculture. I don't know what it is, but I think this has to be discussed somewhere other than this particular venue for whether or not we're going to allow this to go forward. So I am looking for any any solution to this, to my quandary? So I just uh, I note that this is a, a two-year um, approval, and I wondered if that would help us to, in the next two years, develop um, a land use uh, category that would include sanctuaries so that we could better define in the intervening two years, what, what that should look like and how we want to try to con mitigate the risks that are associated with it. I, I don't know whether that helps having a two year term, but I wondered if that would buy us some time. And noting that, I guess that since they've come forward to get this, um, they have, I think, you know, just committed to having fewer large like so that the parking on the roads should be not a problem anymore I, I 
do appreciate the difficulty between the two. Ag and this business is, and, and we say right in our documents that we will restrict uh, tourism developments from locating in areas where there may be negative impacts from agriculture. So I, I just, I wonder if we could approve it for the two years and then work out a reasonable policy in the meantime. So this is sort of a, in my opinion, a chicken and egg thing. Like if we, we, um, we approve this, then we've sort of approve something that we've already, then it sort of, I, I I would, I don't know if it's possible. I'd like to push this back, have a discussion on whether or not this is what, this kind of, this is actually fits into our land use bylaw. This is what we want in the county and then go back on it. Can, is that a, is that a possibility? Yes, commissioner. I, th that's what I would suggest is that we defer this and then get more information from administration to see how this fits within our land use bylaws and uh, then we can make an informed decision and then at that time we can get input from the applicant and from the adjacent landowners. I, I just don't think we want to do this today. So I guess we could if NPC wishes to defer this until a further date after after a dis land use discussion, if that's allowable, and I guess we're NPC, so we can sort of do whatever we want to do. Um, <clears throat> um, so that's what I moved is that we defer it to the next meeting and get more information. Perfect. Um, any more discussion? I'll call the vote all in favor. Thank you very much. Um, we're moving on to subdivision applications. SD 2022 0 19. <laughs> Good morning, MPC. Taylor Felt with the Planning and Development Services team here to present subdivision application SD 2022-019, which is a proposal to create a 25 and a half acre parcel with a 55 acre remainder, and both parcels will remain in the Agricultural General District. Referring to page 58 of the agenda package, uh, which I have up on the screen here, you can locate the parcel nine kilometers east of Strathmore, immediately northwest of the intersection of Highway 1 and Range Road 240. The proposed lot one is developed with a dwelling and several farm and accessory buildings and is accessed by two approaches to Range Road 240 to the east. The dwelling is serviced by an existing well and private septic sewage, system, sewage treatment system. And the remainder parcel, lot two, is used for agricultural production. Um, as it's, and as it does not contain a dwelling, there's no uh, servicing infrastructure in place. An existing approach to Range Road 240 to the east also provides access to lot two. Administration circulated this application to external stakeholders and neighbors within a one mile radius of the quarter section, and no objections were received. Alberta Transportation has required dedication of a 30 meter um, service road along the frontage of Highway 1, which I uh, have illustrated on the tentative plan here, um, which affects the proposed lot one. And ATCO Gas has requested the execution of a utility right of way, um, which I've also captured in the subdivision conditions there. The applicant's proposal generally aligns with the provincial and county statutory plans, as well as the land use bylaw. And the application was received and deemed complete prior to the approval of the recent amendments to the uh, Municipal Development Plan, which includes new policies to protect and minimize the fragmentation of existing agricultural lands by limiting the subdivided area of the quarter section to 20 acres. The policies do support a variation of the 20 acre rule when the subdivision design minimizes the impacts on agricultural land and avoids the cultivated areas and considers environmental areas such as a creek in this uh, case. Um, so we feel that the proposal does support 
uh, is in, in alignment with the policies there. And with that, um, administration is recommending MPC approve subdivision application SD 2022-019, subject to the conditions found on page 52 and 53 of the agenda package, which I'll pull back up here. And if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Taylor. MPC's wishes? I'll move that the Municipal Planning Commission approve subdivision application SD 2022-019, subject to the conditions included in the report. Thank you, Commissioner Link. Discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor? That is passed. Next subdivision application is SD 2022-020. Taylor Feltz here again, presenting subdivision application SD 2022-020, which is a proposal to create a 7.4 acre, 48 acre parcel with a 26 acre remainder parcel. The lands are located four miles west of Strathmore immediately northeast of the intersection of Range Road 262 and Township Road 244, which is in the southwest quarter of Section 26, Township 24, Range 26, west of the 4th. The proposed Lot 1 is not developed and is currently used for um, grazing, although future plans consider the construction of a dwelling serviced by on-site private water and wastewater infrastructure, the applicant has provided studies to support on-site servicing, and it's worth noting that the model process report uh, for the wastewater services stresses the importance of carefully considering the siting of um, a, a pressurized mound system uh, in relation to the building site, and that's to ensure that there's enough room for a reserve system should the first one fail. ATCO gas and high pressure pipelines has also noted an existing utility right of way uh, that runs parallel to Township Road 244 on the applicants um, lot one and two. The setback requirements from the right of way and the existing stream on the eastern portion of lot one here um, will limit the suitable area for development to the northwest portion of lot one. And access to lot one is provided by an existing approach to Township Road 244 to the south, which will require inspection if approved. Lot two is currently developed with two dwellings and several farm and accessory buildings and existing servicing infrastructure. Access is provided by an approach to Township Road 262 to the west. And both lots one and two will remain in the Agricultural General Land Use District, which is an appropriate land use district um, in accordance with the land use bylaw. Administration circulated the application to external stakeholders and neighbors within a one mile radius and one objection letter was received. The letter of objection was received by an adjacent landowner and can be found on page 74 of the agenda package, which I'll pull up on the screen here. I spoke with the landowner and offered the option to visit the county to review the groundwater assessment report that was provided by the applicant and their consultant and um, followed up by email provided McElhaney's review of the uh, report um, for their, to their satisfaction and um, just noted that the, the assessment by both the applicant and McElhaney suggests that the, a new well on lot one would not have adverse effects on adjacent wells. And municipal reserve dedication for lot one and two um, are, are outstanding. Administration is recommending municipal reserve dedication for lot one as a condition of approval and deferring dedication for lot two until future subdivisions are proposed. Um, the, the final amount of the MR outstanding will be confirmed once the final plan of survey is received. And the applicant's proposal generally aligns with the provincial and county statutory plans as well as the land use bylaw. This application similar to the previous one, was received and deemed complete prior to the approval of the recent amendments to municipal development plan, um, which include the policies for minimizing fragmentation of agricultural land and limiting um, impacts to cultivated land. Um, however, in this case, creating the proposed lot one from the existing 33.38 acre lot two does just that. It minimizes the impact of future development on the cultivated lands um, on the balance of the quarter. 
And with that, administration is recommending that MPC approve subdivision application SD 2022-020, subject to the conditions found on page 63 of the agenda package. And that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Taylor. MPC's wishes? Yes, Commissioner Clausen. I just want to say thank you for, to staff for offering the the uh, concerned citizen about the information from the professionals. That's that's good that they can see that because that's basically what we judge everything on here. So with that, I will move that Municipal Planning Commission approved subdivision application SD 2022-020 subject to the following conditions, one through five. Thank you, Commissioner Clausen. Discussion. I'll call the vote. All in favor. That is passed. We'll move on to 3.3 SD 2022-021. Hope you're not tired of hearing my voice quite yet. Um, Taylor Feltz here again presenting SD 2022-021 which is a pr proposal to adjust the boundaries of two parcels located within Southwest 12325 West of the 4th, um, which if approved will result in two parcels, one that's 5.24 acres in size and the other that's 149 acres in size. Uh, both parcels will remain in the Agricultural Land Use District, which is an appropriate designation in accordance with the county's land use bylaw. The intent of the application is to transfer a portion of lot 2A to lot 2 in order to more closely align the parcel's boundaries with the existing agricultural uses of the land. The proposal sees the reduction of lot 1 to encompass the farmstead and shelter belts uh, and the expansion of lot 2 to include the cultivated agricultural land. Lot 1 is developed with a dwelling and several accessory buildings. Um, and servicing, which is provided by an existing well and private sewage treatment system. Access to lot one is provided via three approaches to Township Road 230 to the south. Lot two is used for agricultural production, and as it doesn't contain a dwelling, there is no servicing infrastructure in place. And there are two approaches that provide access to the uh, remainder lot two via Range Road 251 uh, to the west. Administration circulated the application to external stakeholders and neighbors within a one mile radius and no objections were received. The applicant's proposal generally aligns with the provincial and county statutory plans as well as the land use bylaw. And with that administration is recommending that MPC approve subdivision application SD 2022-021 subject to the conditions found on page 76, which I'll pull back up on the screen here. And that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Taylor. I'll move that Municipal Planning Commission approve subdivision SD 2022-021 subject to conditions one through six. Discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor? That is passed. Um, SD, we'll move to 3.4, SD 2022-022, take it away, Taylor. <laughs> Thank you. Um, last subdivision application here, SD 2022-022, which is another boundary adjustment proposal. It's made by the um, same landowner as the previous application reviewed by MPC. The lands are uh, immediately east of the previous application located 10 kilometers south of Strathmore, immediately northwest of the intersection of Township Road 230 and Range Road 250. The intent of the application, I'll just zoom out here. The intent of the application is to transfer a portion of lot 2A to lot 2. Let me get this up here, right? Uh, in order to more closely align the parcel boundaries with the existing agricultural use of the land. The proposal will see the reduction of lot one to 6.3 acres, uh, which will encompass the farmstead and corralled areas, and the expansion of lot two to 150 acres, which will include the cultivated agricultural lands. Both parcels will also remain in the Agricultural General Land Use District. 
which again is appropriate use uh, or designation in the land use bylaw. Lot one is developed with a dwelling, grain bins and several farm and accessory buildings. Servicing is provided by means of an existing well and a private sewage treatment system. And access is provided by an existing approach to Township Road 230 to the south. Lot two is used for agricultural crop production and pasture land. And as it doesn't contain a dwelling, there's no servicing infrastructure in place. And access to lot two is provided by an existing approach to Range Road 250 to the east. Uh, administration circulated this ap application and there were no objections received. And as the proposal generally aligns with the provincial and county statutory plans, as well as the land use bylaw, administration is also recommending approval of subdivision application SD 2022-022, subject to the conditions found on page 86 of the agenda package. And that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to take any questions there. Thank you, Taylor. I'll move that. Uh, Municipal Planning Commission approved subdivision application SD 2022-022 subject to conditions one through six. Discussions? Seeing there is no discussion, I'll call the vote. All in favor? That is passed. We do move on to uh, item 3.5 SD 2022 Dash zero two three. Morning, committee members. Stefan Kuntz on behalf of administration. Uh, subdivision SD twenty twenty two dash zero two three uh, proposes to create a twenty point one four acre parcel with a one hundred thirty nine point eight six acre remain. Lands are located five point five kilometers southeast of the village of uh, Hussar. Um, and 800 meters south of Highway 561 and on the west side of Range Road 194. Uh, so looking at the site here, so the proposed lot uh, is the 20.14 acre site. That's uh, proposed lot one. There's a dwelling uh, and a number of accessory buildings is existing on site, uh, as well as servicing uh, the water well and septic uh, already in place. It also has an access to uh, Range Road 194 to the east. The remainder lands are uh, currently not developed, used for agricultural development. Um, as such, there is no servicing infrastructure and in accordance with county's uh, servicing plans or policies, it's not required to provide it. Uh, we couldn't determine exactly from the air photo whether or not there is an approach uh, to Range Road 194. Um, so the condition will be, if there is one, it will be inspected and if not, it will be required to be constructed. Uh, municipal reserves are not required, this being a first parcel level, they are exempted as per the Municipal Government Act. In accordance with the municipal development plan, um, the agricultural policies of the MDP, uh, again, to try to limit the parcel size to, uh, to, to 20 acres. Um, obviously, this is very slightly over, um, and as with Taylor's, this can be uh, varied slightly um, with regards to uh, existing site conditions. So in this case, there's a pasture um, and some other environmental areas that are encapsulated by this proposed parcel. Uh, so that certainly meets that intent. Um, there were no concerns from agencies and no comments received from any of the adjacent landowners. And as such, administration is proposing, uh, recommending approval in accordance with the conditions on pages 95 and 96. Concludes my presentation. Be happy to take any questions should you have any. Thank you, Stefan. MPC's wishes. I'll move that Municipal Planning Commission approve subdivision application SD 2022-023 subject to the conditions one through six. Um, but I did have just a couple of questions. So uh, subdivision applications are circulated to the uh, neighbors in the one, one mile radius, are they? I Through the chair, that's correct, yes. And um, I noticed a typo. Where was it? I don't think it's... Thank you. It's quoted about uh, Range Road 253, and I think it was supposed to be, oh yeah, under technical review, not a big deal. Should have been 194, I think. Potential upgrade to Range Road. Oh, yes, my apologies, right? you're correct. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Um, and so this 20 acre parcel then, that would technically be the only subdivision allowed on this quarter section then? 
uh, through the chair, that would be, be would be the maximum area. They could then have further subdivisions within that twenty. One. Yeah, That's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, any more discussion? No more discussion. I'll call the vote. All in favor? That is passed. I believe that leads us to the end of the of the planning or of the the. the um, Planning Commission, so I will adjourn this meeting. Thank you very much.